Hi everyone, and welcome to Chem Talk. Ionic bonds and covalent bonds are the two main ways for atoms to bond together to form molecules. In this video, we will be reviewing covalent bonding. You may find the video on ionic bonding on the Chem Talk YouTube channel. Covalent bonding is defined as the sharing of electrons between atoms. It is most common between nonmetal elements such as carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. These elements are found mostly at the top right corner of the periodic table. These nonmetals have a more similar electronegativity value. Electronegativity is the amount of attraction an atom has an electron. When nonmetals with similar electronegativity values interact, they'll often create a covalent bond between the atoms, which results in the sharing of electrons. The sharing of these electrons then allows the atoms to reach an octet configuration. The octet rule is the tendency for atoms to prefer having eight electrons in the valence or shell orbital. Exceptions to this rule include hydrogen, which prefers having two electrons in its outermost orbital. Additionally, other elements have valence orbitals that can hold 10 or even 12 electrons. This may include sulfur pho or phosphorus. The octet configuration is often the most stable. Therefore, it is favorable for atoms to exist in this bonded octet state. Lewis diagrams are a great visual representation of valence electrons in intramolecular interactions. The dots represent electrons, and these shared electrons are colored according to the atoms from which they originate from. This first example is of hydrogen gas. Each hydrogen atom fills its valence orbital with two electrons. Each hydrogen atom can contribute a singular electron to the bond, creating the two electron valence orbital. The next example is bromine gas. Both bromine molecules have seven electrons. In order to achieve the octet configuration, they both need one electron. By sharing an electron, each atom is able to achieve the most stable configuration for their electrons, which is the octet configuration, which follows the octet rule. The final example is of phosphorus trichloride, which shows multiple covalent bonds between phosphorus and chlorine atoms. This, the phosphorus has five electrons, so to achieve octet configuration, it needs three more electrons to reach the golden number of eight. Each of the chlorine atoms needs one more electron to reach their eighth electron. The covalent bonds allow for all atoms in the molecule to have octet configuration of their valence or shell electrons. Additionally, covalent bonds can be single, double, or triple bonds, as long as the atoms end up in an octet configuration. There are two types of covalent bonds, polar and nonpolar. When there's an unequal sharing of electrons, the molecule is considered polar. Contrarily, when there is an equal sharing of electrons, the molecule is considered to be nonpolar. For polar molecules, there is a difference in the electric electronegativity over the entire molecule. As previously mentioned, electronegativity is the strength of a pole an atom has on an electron. Shown here, the hydrochloric acid and water are both examples of polar molecules. There's a disparity in the electronegativity throughout the atom, which is shown by the arrows drawn along the bonds. For nonpolar molecules, there's a balance in the electronegativity of the molecule. Hydrogen and bromine gas are both examples of molecules which are nonpolar because they use the same elements. The electronegativity is balanced and therefore it is a nonpolar molecule. Carbon dioxide has both carbon and oxygen, but given the molecular geometry, there is still a balance in the electronegativity of the molecule. The arrows 
balance each other out, which acts as a visual of the electronegativity forces. This means carbon dioxide is a nonpolar molecule. And with that, this concludes the ChemTalk lecture on covalent bonds.